All righty, if I can get your attention, get ready to find a seat, please. We're going to get things started. Uh, just a quick announcement. We do not have any internet on property, so we will not be live streaming this morning. I am recording the services, and we're going to see if, about putting a video and trying to post that out there later. I do have the internet at home. We just don't want to have it out here on the hill. I'm uh, going to give you a few quick announcements, then we'll introduce Mr. Zach Ray. Not, not at all unfamiliar to our church anyway. Some of you may have not met him. I don't know. Uh, if you remember Cliff Gary, uh, Cliff Ray, Clifton, Cliff Ray Gary Sr., 72 years old, passed away this past Thursday. The uh, funeral services will be tomorrow at 7 p.m. at Owen Funeral Home, and the visitation will be from 2 p.m. until 7 p.m. at the time of the service. So please be in prayer for the uh, family there. Uh, next weekend is our Vision Sunday. And so with our Vision Sunday, we're going to provide the chicken and the mashed potato and gravy. So bring some sides, and uh, we're going to commence pigging after the church service is over with. And depending on how long Brother Russell preaches as to how long it'll take before we get, out, get in there to start uh, pigging. Um, by way of prayer request, we want to also remember uh, the victims of the uh, tornado that went through here the other day. Uh, just doing some, trying to do some recent research on it's, it's a little early to know really what the damage and the lives lost are. It really is. Uh, they're likening this in death toll to the tornado outbreak we had back in 1974, for those of you that remember that. Uh, April 3, 1974 was one of the biggest outbreaks of tornadoes in the history of the United States. And there was over 100 tornadoes that spawned over several states, uh, hit us here in Brandenburg, Cherokee Park, and different places. We had, I think it was 71 people that perished in the Louisville metro area in that uh, tornado outbreak. Right now they're saying somewhere around 70 in Kentucky uh, from this tornado outbreak just the other night. So we don't know. So we want to definitely be in prayer for those folks. We're going to come back to that in a minute when we open in prayer. Um, also, by way of announcements, Tim Pike was here. He left. His mother just passed away. And so he's needed to go be with uh, family and take care of some business there. So be in prayer for the Pike family. Uh, we do have bulletins in the vestibule, and we're trying to keep up with those each week. So if you want a, a bulletin, matter of fact, I meant to grab one in case there was something that we were missing that I needed to announce. But anyhow, and then also Brian Pretty has got an additional 10 or so more Christmas ornaments on the Christmas tree, if you know what I'm talking about. If you've ever been in a Walmart or some store and they had an angel tree and you could pull a, a name off an angel tree and buy gifts for them, and uh, that's kind of our version of that, only we're doing it here out of our church for our local community, even more specifically for the children we pick up on the van and trying to help provide for them a form of Christmas that they might otherwise not have. Um, this thing was buzzing at me. I didn't know if somebody else was trying to send me something I need to announce. Uh, but anyhow, uh, we want to take just a few minutes, just a moment of silence for the uh, tornado victims, and then uh, I'll open this up in a word of prayer, and then I will introduce Zach. Heavenly Father, whoop, moment of prayer, moment of silence, I'm sorry. Dear Heavenly Father, we do come to you humbly just realizing just how gracious you have been to us. As I've read the announcements and thinking of the things that's taken place in our community in the Kentucky, state of Kentucky and other surrounding states uh, over the last few days, uh, there's just certainly a lot of lives have been touched, either through death or destruction, uh, through the tornado outbreak. And Lord, we want to especially lift up uh, before these, uh, before you, these people that have been affected by this, either directly or indirectly. Lord, we know that uh, several lives have been touched. We looked at the. Some of the video footage and the pictures of the Mayfield, Kentucky area, and it's just uh, devastation. The community has lost a lot of, a lot of buildings and, and several lives. And so, Lord, we pray that you'll touch them. Lord, we pray that you'll touch us here on this hill this morning. May we walk out here feeling that it was good to be in the, your house and that we would walk out here blessed, Lord, for being in your house. And, uh, Lord, we just pray that you'd be with everything that's said and done on this uh, during this service, Lord, that you, your anointing would be upon us. Lord, as we go forward from this day, just help us as we look to the Christmas season. May we never, never forget what it's about. May we always worship you in spirit and truth, and may your truth shine forth from us. Lord, we love you and we thank you for this day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 
probably traveled the longest distance to be here this morning. My son-in-law, Zacharias, or Zach Ray, uh, plays the piano, sings, preaches, and does all that kind of stuff, and, uh, and a lot more. Happened to marry my daughter and stole her away to northern Ohio. I'll never be able to forget. I'm just kidding. Uh, but uh, we love him. We appreciate him. And we hope that you will, too. And uh, Zach, it's yours, buddy. Like Christmas Everywhere you go Take a look at the five and ten Listen it once again With candy canes and silver lanes that glow It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas Toys in every store but the prettiest sight to see is the holly that will be on your own front door. A pair of hop along boots and a pistol that shoots is the wish for Barney and Ben. And dolls that'll talk and will go for a walk is the hope for Janice and Jen. And mom and dad can hardly wait for school to start again. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Everywhere you go, there's a tree at the Grand Hotel, one in the park as well. It's the sturdy kind that doesn't mind the snow. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. As soon the bells will start, but the thing that'll make them ring. Is the carol that you sing right within your heart? Beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Soon the bells will start. But the prettiest sight to see is the holly that will be on your own front door. Sure, it's Christmas. Christmas Day Their old familiar carols play And wild and sweet their songs repeat Of peace on earth, good will to men And the bells are ringing Like a choir singing Can anybody hear them? Peace on earth, good will to men And in despair I bow my head There is no peace on earth, I said 
For hate is strong and hides the song of peace on earth, good will the man. Oh, and the bells are ringing. Sing that peace on earth, you know. Like a choir singing. Can anybody hear them? It's peace on earth, good will to men. Then ring the bells more loud and deep. God is not dead, nor does he sleep. Peace on earth, peace on earth. The wrong shall fail, the right prevail. With peace on earth, good will to men. And ringing, singing on its way. The world revolved from night to day. A voice, a chime, a chance of life. Peace on earth, good will to men. And the bells they're ringing like a choir singing. And in my heart, I hear them. It's peace on earth, good will to men. your heart and hear them. It's peace on earth, good will to man. Oh, it's peace on earth. Sing that with me. Oh, it's peace on earth. Sinners reconciled, joyful all ye nations arise, join the triumph of the skies with angelic hosts proclaim Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing, Glory to the newborn King, Glory to the newborn King. Shepherds, why this jubilee? Why your joyous reigns prolong? What the gladsome tidings be which inspire your heavenly song? 
Christ by highest heaven adored, Christ the everlasting Lord. Late in time, behold him come, offspring of the virgin's womb. Hailed in flesh, the God and see, and hail incarnate deity. Pleased with men, with men to dwell. Jesus, our Emmanuel, hark the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn King. Glory to the newborn King. Hail the heaven-born Prince of Peace. Hail the Son of Righteousness. Light and life to all He brings. Risen with healing in His wings. And mild He lays His glory by. Born that man no more may die. Born to raise us from the earth. Born to give us second birth. Hark the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn King. Glory to the newborn King. Hark the herald angels sing. Well, good morning, everybody. All right, so five of us have had our coffee. That's a great start. Let's try that again. Good morning, everybody. I have to hear you because I certainly can't see you. I have this light that's shining directly in my eyes. <laughs> I can't see anyone. So this is great. I feel like I'm by myself at a piano, completely relaxed. It's wonderful. But I am so, so thrilled, first of all, that I am able to be here today. Um, there's so many people here that I know very well and just have had the opportunity to build relationship with. So it's wonderful to be able to see everybody here. And, and for everybody who's here, I find it amazing that you decided this morning to get up probably really early to get that morning cup of coffee, to have breakfast, to change, to make church a priority, and to be able to uh, make the drive however long it was, whether it was 5 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes. Uh, I used to drive an hour <laughs> at times. And so whatever that drive looks like, whatever that prep work looked like to get here this morning, thank you so much. Um, it, it really means a lot to me, and I know it means a lot to the Lord as well, that the church is able to come together and to gather uh, around the common bond of Christ. And that's, that's why I'm here this morning. I hope to be able to sing some really fun Christmas songs, uh, to sing some old Christmas carols, um, to deliver a message, but I want to make sure to dedicate every part of this service, every facet, whether it be a, a just a fun Christmas song that we sing, whether it be a, a hymn, whatever it is, I want to dedicate that uh, to Christ and in worship to Christ. And I think it's amazing. So with that being said, if you know a song, I want you to sing from the top of your lungs. I'd like to be able to hear you over the in-ear track that I have because I think ultimately there's two different ways that we can approach any service at church. We can go as a spectator to just sit and listen and maybe try to get something out of it. Or we could go to church to worship the one true God. And we could go to church to be able to join together in that worship. That's what the focus needs to be this morning. So with everything else that we do, that's where I want to be. I'm so grateful for the opportunity to be here. Now, I wanted to do this next. I have a little bit of a, I wouldn't say random program, but I have a lot of different songs that I just heard this year and said, I have to sing that this year. So what we're going to do, um, we have the band that usually plays for the hymns, and we didn't have a time where we sang any hymns this morning. So we're going to do this. The band is going to play. We have worked really hard. We worked really hard this morning, didn't we? 15 minutes. That's really hard, guys. Come on. <laughs> We worked really hard this morning to put together some really fun Christmas carols that we think sound great. We're going to play one song, and then we're going to invite you guys to sing on a couple songs. So here's the first song.
Keep it going. Give them a hand. They, that 15 minutes really paid off, didn't it? <laughs> All right, here's what we're going to do. I want us to sing a couple of classic, classic Christmas carols that they've selected. I think we, we work together pretty well to select some songs. So the first one we're going to sing, stand with me. you got to stretch your legs just a little bit. Stand with me. We're going to sing the song, Joy to the World. Now, I don't have the lyrics to Joy to the World in front of me, and I don't know if you do either. So if you happen to find it in a hymnal, share what the number is with your neighbor. If not, let's just mumble the words together and praise God. You ready? Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her. Sing and sing and he rules the world with and grace makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness. And wonders of his love, of his love, and wonders, wonders of his love. Very good. Give yourselves a hand. That was awesome. That was awesome. Was my mic cutting out? A little bit. I felt like my mic was cutting out just a bit. If it is, we can switch it out after this next song. Let's do this. Um, you can't have Christmas without some sort of soft, peaceful, driving down the road as snow is falling Christmas carol, right? You got to have one of those. We do Silent Night. And I'm honestly pretty sure it wasn't a silent night if you know anything about labor and childbirth. But Silent Night is the song we're going to sing. Here we go. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin mother. And child, holy infant, so tender and mild, deep in heaven, we be in heaven. Holy night, 
the shepherd's grave had the sound really good. <laughs> Above heavenly all sing hallelujah. A Savior The Savior. Give a hand to these wonderful, wonderful. Did that not sound really good? I mean, wow. I'm impressed by that. Now, here's what I wanted to do. Let me get closer so you can actually hear me. All right, so here's what I wanted to do. We had, like I said, a couple of Christmas carols. I mean, you, you could be seated, by the way. Otherwise, you'll probably be standing till the program's end, and you don't want to do that. Um, I wanted to be able to create a program because, I, and I was talking to somebody about this before the service started. Um, there's this problem with Christmas songs is there's only so many of them, and it's very easy if you've done a program for a couple of years to do them all. Like literally every Christmas carol, every different way. And so I'm thinking, I've done two Christmas programs so far. They were probably anywhere from 13 to 15 songs each. That's about 30 Christmas carols, Christmas songs, various things. And uh, so I wanted to do a few things that are different. So I found some very classic Christmas songs that are just really fun. Can we have a good time with them? Is that all right this one? I'm seeing some heads nod. We're going to have a good time. This one... There's no place like home for the holidays. There we go. All right. Come on. Oh, there's no place like home for the holidays. Cause no matter how far away you roam, when you pine for the sunshine of a friendly gaze, for the holidays, you can't beat home, sweet home. I met a man who lives in Tennessee, and he was heading for Pennsylvania and some homemade pumpkin pie. From Pennsylvania, folks are traveling down to Dixie Sunny Shore. From Atlantic to Pacific, Gee, the traffic is terrific. Oh, there's no place like home for the holidays. Cause no matter how far away you roam, if you want to be happy in a million ways, for the holidays you can be at home, sweet home. For the sunshine of a friendly day I met a man who lives in Tennessee And he was heading for Pennsylvania And some homemade pumpkin pie from Pennsylvania, folks are traveling down to Dixie's sunny shore. From Atlantic to Pacific, gee, the traffic is terrific. Oh, there's no place like home for the holidays. Cause no matter how far away you roam, if you want to be happy in a million ways for the holidays you can't be at home sweet home for the holidays you can't be home sweet home 
All right, let's keep it going. Don't get, keep, don't let your hands get tired. Here we go. If they do, you can snap like this. Oh, the weather outside is frightful, but that fireplace is so delightful. And since we've no place to go, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Well, it doesn't show signs of stopping. And I brought me some corn for popping. And the lights are turned way down low. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. When we finally kiss goodnight, how I'll hate going out in the storm. But if you really hold me tight, all the way home I'll be warm. The fire is slowly dying. And my dear, we're still goodbye. But as long as you love me so, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Can you snap do this? There you go, all right. When we finally kiss goodnight, how I'll hate going out in the storm. But if you really grab me tight, well, all the way home I'll be warm. Oh, the fire is slowly dying, and my dear, we're still goodbye. But as long as you love me so, let it snow, 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 let it snow. Let it snow. Oh, let it snow. <laughs> we need a little bit calmer one after that. <laughs> if you know this one, this one can sound really beautiful with everybody singing. Sing along with this one, ready? You can hear bell. Silver bell, it's Christmas time in the city. Ring a ring, hear them ring. Soon it will be Christmas day. City sidewalks, busy sidewalks. Dressed in holiday style In the air There's a feeling of Christmas Children laughing People passing Meeting smile after smile And on every street corner You hear Silver bells Oh, come on, sing that. Silver bell, it's Christmas time in the city. Ring a ring, near the marine. Soon it will be a Christmas day. together. Silver bells. I can hear you now. Silver bells. It's Christmas time in the city. Soon it will be Christmas day. You followed me there. You knew it. <laughs> Wonderful. Now, I always forget the part of my program where I'm supposed to give myself a plug for the products that I have. I have not forgotten this morning. I brought them up here to remind me. So, let me see. How many of you, by raise of hand, have this CD right here, Reflections? How many of you have that? Anybody? Anybody? Oh, I see a couple. 
couple people. First of all, if you do not have this CD, this is a wonderful, wonderful piano arrangement CD. It's meant to be something that's very reflective, something very peaceful. Um, think about maybe if you're praying, if you're driving down the road and you're able to not fall asleep while listening to it. I've got some really cool piano arrangements that I arranged. I recorded it at a studio down in Nashville about two or three years ago. It is still relevant. It will still bless you. So make sure you pick these up. These are $15 at my table. But if you already have this CD, get it for someone for Christmas. Christmas. It's a great Christmas gift, <laughs> but throw along with it. I have something brand new, and this is the absolute first time that I've ever offered this to anybody. I just got these in yesterday, and I'm so excited about it. This is the companion guide to my CD Reflections. Now, you may ask, what is a companion guide? Brother Mark, I'm sure that's exactly what was going through your head, was it not? Yeah, that's right. That's right. He was wondering, what is a companion guide? I have in here a personal note from me talking about the album, um, why I put some of the songs I did. I have the stories behind some of the songs, like the story behind this song, It Is Well. Why did I put the Heaven Medley on my record? You'll be able to find that story out. Um, I have, like I said, different song stories. I also have five devotions in here. Believe it or not, I sat down, I uh, took some scripture verses, I wrote out some of my reflections on these chapters. So uh, it's definitely uh, my thoughts on what the passage is saying and how we can apply it to our lives. Um, some of them I have shared before, maybe as a sermon afterwards. Some of them are completely brand new. Um, some of the topics I cover on there are reflections on anxiety. Man, that's a big one, especially around Christmas time. People struggle uh, with anxiety, sometimes with a little bit of depression commingled in there. Get this. I really, truly believe th this has helped me personally. So I really believe it will help you. Um, so uh, get that. Um, I have reflections on Christ, reflections on peace. So this is the companion guide to the CD. And it is on my table for $10. So put them together. You have two for $25. You cannot beat that deal. So make sure you stop and check those out. Now, I am going to work my way over to the piano here because, like I said, I want to do some fun songs, but I want to do some Christmas carols, and I want to do them in a little bit different way. So I've got some, uh, the next part of the program, I've got some uh, a little bit older Christmas carols. Some of them are kind of in a, a hauntingly beautiful minor key, um, but I think you'll enjoy them. The first one's going to be this, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Listen to this. Rejoice, Emmanuel, 
shall come to thee, O Israel. Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is being interpreted as God with us. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. O oh, come, thou key of David, come and open wide our heavenly home. Make safe the way that leads on and close the path to misery rejoice rejoice Emmanuel shall come to thee Him along 
the bay, the sun, no, Mary. I should have probably had the band come back up and play it with me, don't you think? <laughs> Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy Save our sons and daughters. Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child you deliver will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know? That your baby boy would give sight to a blind man. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would calm the storm with his hand? Did you know that your baby boy Walked where angels trod When you've kissed your little baby Then you've kissed the face of God Mary, did you know Did you know that the blind will see The deaf will hear And the dead will live again speak the praises of the Lamb. Mary, did you know that your baby boy is Lord of all creation? Mary, did you know that your baby boy one day roll the nations did you know that your baby boy was heaven's perfect lamb and that sleeping child you're holding is the grave
I've got one more song I'm going to sing, and I'll do a very short message. I know it'll be slightly longer this morning, but I really would like you to sing this with me. This is, in my opinion, one of the prettiest, prettiest, prettiest songs you can sing at Christmas time. This is Oh Holy Night. Would you sing this with me? I'm even going to do this. I'll do the first verse a cappella if you'll promise to sing really loud. Can we do that? All right. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of the dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error's pining. Till he appeared and the soul felt his word. The thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. opportunity to just share some of the Christmas songs that have really uh, just meant so much to me. 
And I, I want to share a very brief message with you this morning. Like I said, I know it's going to go maybe 10 minutes over, but I, I promise I will be brief when I do this. Um, but I, I want to share these verses here. And they're from Isaiah chapter 11. I'm going to read verses 1 through 5. It says, And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots, and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, and shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears, but with righteousness shall he judge the poor. And reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, and but with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins, and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. Now, if any of you saw it, notice that he had a slide going beforehand, the title of the program, Foretold. And if when you saw <laughs> that title foretold, if you thought, well, he's going to talk about prophecy, you'd be right. <laughs> okay, it's it's very uh, there's there's only a few themes you could do around Christmas time. All right, there's the winter wonderland theme, uh, there's an at home for Christmas theme, and there's about a prophecy theme, and maybe in a way in a manger theme. That's about it. But I, I want you to stick with me for this part because maybe you've been listening to the music and you think, okay, I've enjoyed the music, I've had a wonderful morning about Christmas. Don't ruin it by getting up there and yakking for 30, 40 minutes. Um, and I promise not to do that. I really hope to share with you a, a very fresh perspective on uh, or a fresh approach to particular prophecy around Christmas time because a lot of times. You'll just hear um, one verse of prophecy quoted and then correlated and then another one quoted and correlated. It just kind of is just a, a back and forth. And that's not what I want to do with this. What I want to do is I want to take one prophecy with this one verse, and we're going to see how it branches like a tree, how this one prophecy impacts so much of our lives today, impacts so much of our past, and impacts our future. Believe it or not, this one verse is absolutely vital in what it foretells. And so I want to share this with you, and I'm going to just read verse 1 again. It says, And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse. Now, if you are new to reading your Bible, or if you don't know a lot about the science of biblical hermeneutics, which basically is very fancy words meaning how you interpret the Bible. Um, if you don't know anything about that, you might be thinking, that sounds a little bit weird. There's coming forth a rod out of the stem of what appears to be a person. Okay, that, that, <laughs> that seems like it's a little bit abnormal. It seems like it's a little odd. And um, that's not at all what it's referring to. This language here is very symbolic, all right? These words, rod and stem, uh, are not talking about a literal figurative rod that's going to grow out of a person or a tree that's going to start sprouting from someone's head. Sadly, Groot, uh, to my knowledge, does not exist, um, if you're familiar with the Marvel Cinematic Universe at all. Um, so, uh, there, this language is very, very symbolic, uh, but it correlates to a real historical figure. So let's look at it for just a second. The rod. What are they talking about when it says, hey, there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse? Um, this particular word, I want somebody to guess how many times you think this appears in the Old Testament. Somebody shout it out. Any guesses? Going once, going twice. How many times? One. And you'd be right. <laughs> it's not that hard. It appears one time in the Old Testament. And it means a twig, a shoot, or a branch that sprouts from the earth. So it's not speaking of a physical rod or this big, long staff that you're thinking about. It means literally a tender branch, but one that's young and healthy and growing. Have you ever uh, maybe gone hiking or walked in the woods and you see like a little sprout of a tree coming up? And you know it's going to be a big tree, uh, but you just see the little sprout. Or maybe you visit a nursery and you see just a little sprout of a tree sticking up from the earth. Anybody seen that before? Yeah, I have. I have. And so that's what this is referring to. There shall come forth a rod out of uh, the stem of Jesse. Now, what is this phrase, the stem of Jesse? This word occurs. Somebody guess how many times this one occurs. Everybody said one. <laughs> I heard a one. No, it actually occurs three times in the Old Testament. And the best connotation we can understand of it would mean to be a stump uh, a root stock or a shoot shooting out of the stump. So by implication, when it talks about this rod coming out of the stem of Jesse, it's talking about the fresh growth of new life coming out of a decaying, dead, almost dead 
stump. You see like a, a tree that's been chopped down or, or maybe with some of the storm damage, uh, a tree that's fallen over and what, what remains? A stump. Would you call that a healthy tree? Would you call that a flourishing or a prosperous tree? No. But this prophecy says this, and there shall come forth a rod, this little growth out of this decaying stump called Jesse. Now, who is Jesse? Anybody know? David's father, the father of the great King David. For those of us who've heard the story of David and Goliath, he was his dad. And the thing is, is this. Let me, let me give some context because you're thinking, all right, we have a, a branch, a symbolic branch that's growing out of a symbolic stump about a real person. This makes a whole lot of sense. Okay, let me give some context here. The book we're reading, the book of Isaiah, in it, Isaiah is prophesying to the children of Israel about how they're going to undergo one of the darkest time periods of their existence. In the previous chapter, he talks about how God planned to use the mighty Assyrian army to absolutely level the nation of Israel. And in fact, we see that that happened in the years of 720 to 700 BC. The Assyrian army crushed northern Israel and carried them away as captives. Then, not like they got a whole lot of rest, about 150 years later, in 586 BC, the Babylonian Empire destroyed Judah, sacked the city of Jerusalem, the holy city, destroyed the temple... And once again, carried the people off as captives. Now, once the Jews eventually returned home, they had a very brief respite. And history informs us that they were conquered by Alexander the Great of Greece, of Macedon, in 332 B.C. And then again by the Roman general Pompey in 63 B.C. Do you kind of get the picture that Israel's about to undergo a lot of death, a lot of catastrophe, a lot of destruction? And so when we look at the, the symbolic language of this prophecy, what he's saying is the house of Jesse, which had enjoyed the wonderful vanquishing of its foes when they lived in the time of King David, and who had enjoyed this immense amount of wealth and prosperity under King Solomon, he said, everything you've known and enjoyed up until this point is going to be reduced to an almost dead, decaying stump in the ground. That's a little bit of a depressing prophecy, don't you think? I mean, if somebody came up to you and said, just want you to know that in five years, everything you love is going to be taken from you and your house is going to be destroyed with fire and uh, the church that you go to is going to be burned, uh, you, would, you would have just cause to say, wow, what, what kind of prophet is this? What are you doing? And I can imagine that that would lead to a lot of hopelessness. Just a feeling of, you're telling me for the next 700 years, after enjoying 300 years of King David and Solomon and some of these kings that had prosperity, you're telling me for the next 700 years, because of the sin of the people of Israel, that this is the judgment of God. And yet, what do we read? In verse 1 he says, And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse. There's going to be a little bit of growth that's going to blossom into a flourishing tree. There's going to be something that changes that comes out of that dying, dead, rotting stump of Jesse that redeems it, that becomes greater than what that stump of a tree ever could have been. And that new growth is going to spring forth. Uh, just a very brief side note, or I might call it a secondary application, is that if there's something in your life that's dead, that you think that you have completely given up on, that you think there is absolutely no way that this will ever work out, I want to remind you that if you are praying in faith and in God's will, that God has the ability and power to be able to bring growth out of something that appears to be dead. And that's what this prophecy is talking about. Because although it looked hopeless, and although they would undergo great pain and suffering, God said, I have a plan for you that is bigger than you could possibly imagine because through the house of Jesse, it was promised to them that that Messiah would come. This verse, this, this rod that's coming out of Jesse is speaking of Jesus. 
Because as this prophecy was fulfilled, which we'll see in a moment, it's fulfillment in the New Testament, Jesus and what he accomplished at the cross was far greater than the simple house of Jesse than the simple kingdom of Israel. And out of what looked to be a, a obscure and dying and nation that was bound by captivity, God stepped in. And with his advent, we see growth. We see what was dead coming to life. Is that not the story of Christ? Does he not take things that are dead and brings them to life? I'm going to keep reading here. We see the fulfillment of that prophecy in the New Testament. Paul confirmed it in Acts chapter 13. He was giving a synopsis of Israeli history, and actually he included, think about, if you had to pull all the verses, and you maybe had like five lines that you could write about history. He pulled this one. He says this, uh, and afterward, they desired a king, speaking of the children of Israel. And God gave unto them Saul, the son of Sis, the man of the tribe of Benjamin, by the space of 40 years. And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. Of this man's seed, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a Savior, Jesus. The author of Hebrews confirmed it as well. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, which tribe Moses spake nothing about concerning the priesthood. Comes out of Judah, comes out of the tribe of Jesse. Listen to this, the final words, some of the final words in Revelation 22, 16, 17. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David. And the bright and morning star and the spirit and the bride say, Come, and let him that heareth say, Come, and let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will take the water of life freely. Here's the thing I love about the prophecy surrounding the birth of Christ, as it paints such context to what we're celebrating. Yes, we, we're celebrating the birth of baby Jesus, but we also celebrate that at that moment in history, we finally see the fullness of time come to pass. Jesus, the root of Jesse, is the culmination of all those Old Testament prophets. That's why we celebrate Christmas. Jesus, the root of Jesse, is the Savior and Lord of all risen in power. That's why we celebrate Christmas. Jesus, the root of Jesse, is the bright and morning star and the one alone who offers hope and salvation as an answer to the depravity of this world. And I say to you this morning that Jesus is your answer as well. Now here's where we we tie it all together in the scope of things. Because Jesus desires to forgive you of all of your sin, past, present, and future. He desires to deliver you from the power of sin in this present world. But don't miss this at Christmas time because we hear about those. But don't miss that he has such a love and such a desire for you that he wants to save you in the act of ultimate redemption by purging this world from the curse and giving us a glorified existence with him. Because (laughs) here's the thing, Christmas, like every other facet in Scripture, it's not just a story about something that happened in the past. We understand where Christmas fits in the scope of history. Christmas is a foretelling of the plans that God has for us in the future. I think of what God said to Israel, for I know the plans that I have for you. I know the thoughts that I think of you, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to bring you to an expected end. It's a foretelling of the glorious future that awaits those that love God. So until we see that ultimate redemption, and and I understand that this can be a a sensitive topic. I I don't know if anyone personally who lost someone with the storms, but it's a good possibility. Um, Like you said, 70-some people whose lives were snuffed out overnight. And yet if we grieve at Christmas, if we are happy at Christmas, if we cry at Christmas, if we are joyful at Christmas, whatever emotion that is that you're feeling, we wait for our ultimate redemption. 
We wait for the day where this body can no longer die, where it has no sickness, where there's no sin. And that's not tied to just a place called heaven. Because Christ promised to renew the earth. Christ has promised to give us a place serving him and being with him. And even Romans says we were saved to that hope that we would be eternally existent with the person of Jesus Christ. So until we see that ultimate redemption, let's celebrate the advent, the coming of Christ. Let's focus on his gospel. Let's, at Christmas time, stop focusing on things that aren't related to his gospel because his gospel is not just for those who don't believe. His gospel is what sanctifies each and every one of us. His gospel is what gives meaning and value and purpose to this life. And then let's look expectantly for the second coming. Not for the Antichrist, not for the Jews to build the temple again. Let's look for Christ to come back. Let's look for the day where we are reunited with the one that our hearts should love the most. And that second coming, that very action, is what the birth of Christ foretold. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for this day. Lord, thank you so much for your son. Thank you for what the role that Christmas plays in your plan for each and every one of us. And it's so humbling, God, to think that the action that happened so many years ago not only is relevant to my life today, but means the world to my existence. God, thank you so much for your your glory, for how you revealed it, through angels singing to shepherds. God, thank you for the wise men that you sent. God, thank you for the things that we get to sing about, the things that we love about Christmas. And God, I pray we would look toward your second coming, that we'd long to see you again. Thank you for what Christmas has foretold. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much. I'm going to call my father-in-law back to the platform as he eagerly makes his way down here. (laughs) Thank you so much for taking the time to listen, to allow me to experiment. This is my first Christmas concert of the year. I have three more that I I did not even really try to do much (laughs) with it this year because of COVID. I didn't think anybody would really be uh, meeting, but it has been absolutely a blast. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Make sure you stop by my table out in the lobby. I have the books. I have the CDs. And with that being said, I will turn it over to my father-in-law. Thank you, Brother Zach. Uh, hope you enjoyed uh, this morning's presentation, whatever you want to call it. Um, uh, but I hope more than that, I hope it was a blessing to you. And I uh, hope it was something to uh, arouse your heart and your feelings, your emotions, to serve Christ better. Because obviously that's what we're here for. We don't want to just come here and just meet and greet and have a good good time we want to draw closer to God and obviously that's the most important thing that we can do as Christians Uh, let's bow our head well let's not bow our heads yet Zach can you do something on the piano just something an invitational type Um, he gave us a good presentation of the gospel Jesus came to die on the cross for our sins Bethlehem was just the beginning of his earthly existence but he existed in eternity forever before coming here and after coming here he walked on this earth lived a sinless life and then he died for our sins so that we wouldn't have to like you said earlier lights are kind of blinding the eyes I can see shadows out there but I don't know who's out there that might not know Christ as their Savior if you've never in your life asked Jesus to save you You missed out on the greatest decision of your life. He'll forever change you and set you free from your sin debt so you can walk in peace and harmony with Him. Kind of a little practice session here for that time when we get to be with Him up there. 
when we walk in perfect peace, perfect harmony, like we've never existed on this earth. If you'll stand to your feet, heads bowed. Eyes are closed. These altars are open. If you need to come and pray, please do. But more importantly, if you need to trust Christ as your Savior, please don't let this moment pass you by. He's here to save you, even this morning. Is there anybody like that at all? Just slip out of your seat and come forward. Brother Mark or myself, somebody will sit, we'll, we'll, we'll work with you. Help you understand it better. Anybody at all? Heavenly Fathers, we bow in your presence, Lord. We just want to give you thanks for your grace and for your mercy, for your abundance of love that you shared upon us with Jesus dying on the cross for our sins. Lord God, we can never thank you enough for what you've done for us. May your mercy and love be upon everyone that's here in this building today. May you especially be with those that's gone through a terrible time here Uh, with the tornado outbreak, not just in Kentucky, but even the other states. We hear there was one tornado that was on the ground for about 200 miles. That affects a lot of lives. Lord, I pray that you'd use this to just wake up America to the reality that they're going to face you someday. Lord, may our country find revival and see a turning back to you Lord, we need revival in this nation. Lord God, I just pray that you dismiss us in your love. And Lord, we thank you for everything you've done. In Jesus' name, amen.